Hello. If in your astrology software you pull up an eclipse chart, it, it will not show the time that that eclipse is visible with the default settings. And there are settings in most programs that you can change, and then you will see the time that it's visible. So, for example, on August 21st, 2017, the NASA website, and you can't get much more authoritative than a NASA website, shows that the eclipse will be visible. This total eclipse on August 21st, 2017, will be visible just south of Salem, Oregon. So this is the state of Oregon in the northwest of the United States, and it's difficult to read in this captured window, easier to see in the actual website, but there's Salem, Oregon, in this gray area. This shows where the eclipse is visible, and just a little bit south of Salem is the red line, which is the best place to see the eclipse, just south of Salem, Oregon, and down here it says 10.18 a.m., and over here 10.21 a.m., so this whole distance only changes it by three minutes. So it'll be right at 10.18 a.m., just south of Salem, Oregon, that the eclipse is most visible. However, when you pull up an eclipse chart for Salem, Oregon, uh, in your astrology software, it will not show that it's happening at 10.18 a.m. unless you change some of the settings. And this will be true in probably any astrology program because of the way we think about where planets are in astrology is not, is not you might say, compatible with the idea of viewing an eclipse. Okay, so first point is, the eclipse is viewable at 10.18 a.m. in Salem, Oregon. There's a little town just south of Salem, just about perfectly on the line, called Hopville, Oregon. So let's pull up an eclipse chart for Hopville, Oregon, and instead of 10.18 a.m., it's going to show 11.30 a.m. And here it is. So I'm in, I happen to be in the Sirius 2.0 software. This is going to be true in almost any program. And here's the eclipse. So the way I selected this eclipse is you go into New. Let's just clear everything. I clear the list. I click over here to get lunations and eclipses. I select lunations and eclipses. I have a lot of choices. I select solar eclipses only. A date of August 21st. I want only one eclipse. And I had put in Hopville, Oregon. I click OK. I click Done. And... There's the chart, and it tells me that it the eclipse occurs at 11, 30, 11 hours, 30 minutes, and 6 seconds. It's over an hour different. What the heck is going on? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, there are two things going on, and I've got them listed right here. Number one, to get the time of the eclipse, you would have to use something called parallax corrected positions. In astrology, we don't take account of parallax. Um, and in order to see w when the eclipse would occur, you have to use parallax correct positions. And another thing is, there's something that I call an astronomical eclipse and an astrological eclipse. And you'd want to use the astronomical eclipse. So I'm going to explain a little bit about what these two things are. And you can change these things in most programs. I'll show you very quickly how you do it in the Sirius, and it's the same in the Kepler program. Um, and you'll see that we do get the 1018 AM. First, let me give you an idea of what parallax corrected position means. I have a nice image of it right here from the KhanAcademy.org website in an article about lunar parallax. So it's called lunar parallax. Here's the Earth in the lower right-hand corner of this image. There's the Moon. And if you lived on this part of, uh, of the Earth, you, you have this line, you would say, here's the moon. You'd say, okay, here's the moon right in front of the star Regulus. So you'd say, there's the moon right in front of Regulus. But if you live over here on, on the Earth, here's your line of sight, and you would say the moon, maybe the moon would be just before Regulus, whereas if you live over here, you would say the moon is after Regulus. So you're getting a, it might be hard for you to read, but it says Regulus here in a, a faint uh, font, and that little white thing is the star Regulus. So this is called parallax. It, 
the uh, where the moon appears to be depends on where you are on the Earth. Now, this is not true for the other planets. Well, in astrology, we call the moon planets, but say for Mercury, Venus, and Mars, they're so far away. You can imagine if you take this moon and you push it very, very, very far away, then these two lines start to become parallel. So parallax, which is the difference, which is this angular distance, this ang angle, the difference in the line of sight from these two points, decreases as the object gets uh, farther and farther away. So that's the problem of lunar, power, para, lunar parallax. Sorry, and uh, lunar parallax can make a difference of up to about one degree. <clears throat> um, and in astrology, we generally don't take account of parallax. We, we show where the moon is as if you lived in the center of the Earth, which may seem really weird. Most programs give an option to give the actual moon position from where you are, we call that parallax corrected moon. And you can select that in your software. And now you've solved the problem. Now you'll get the 1018 AM time. And I'll show you that uh, in the Sirius software, just a few mouse clicks, and you've got it. Now, by the way, you may be thinking to yourself, as I did many years ago when I encountered this whole issue, is why are we using like this kind of average position of the moon from the center of the earth let's use the actual position of the moon from where we are well i've used it a lot of astrologers have and to much to my amazement the the moon we've been using from my observations works better i mean logically i would expect the parallax corrected moon to be the one we should use but in practice doesn't seem to be the case now we don't have very solid quantitative data that's definitive um but so it's a little bit of personal opinion but i think um the parallax corrected moon is not the one to use and there are a few astrologers who think it is the one to use but in any case <clears throat> excuse me getting back to our main topic here if you want to know when to see the eclipse you're going to have to know where the moon is from where you're viewing it obviously and then we want to use the parallax corrected moon so going back to the Sirius software if I go to settings, other settings, and then go to the second tab, astro settings, and it's right there, parallax corrected. You have selected parallax correction. Over 90% of astrologers do not use parallax corrected positions, etc., etc., just to make sure you know what you've done. You can also, in this software, do only the moon parallax corrected, or you can parallax correct all of the planets. We, as I just mentioned, for the other planets, it makes almost no difference. Um, and by the way, there's a little checkbox. This is kind of nice. If parallax selected, dis display parallax collected, corrected in the chart wheel. Well, that's handy so that you know it's, that's what, we're, what your chart is. So it's going to show us up here, solar eclipse, astrological. Now, in a minute, I'll tell you what the astronomical eclipse is. But this is the astrological. And now it says parallax corrected positions. And what time does it occur? 1018. Hallelujah. We match NASA. There it is, 1018 in Hopville, Oregon, on August 21st, 2017, is when the eclipse occurs. Okay, so we've solved the problem of, of why we're not getting the actual time that the eclipse is visible um, by using parallax correction, which, of course, now that you understand what it is, makes sense. Okay, now let me show you the other thing that affects the time, going back to our PowerPoint presentation, which is whether you're using the astronomical eclipse or the astrological eclipse. Now this difference between astronomical eclipse and astrological eclipse is a little more time consuming to explain. I have a video that uh, is about a half hour long that goes into it in detail, um, and I'll provide a link to that at the end of this video up, um, so that you can uh, watch that if you want. But just very briefly, the difference is that in the astronomical eclipse, we're seeing when the sun and moon most perfectly overlap each other. And in the astrological eclipse, we're seeing when the sun and moon are conjunct in zodiac longitude. Well, 
If you didn't quite follow that, you can watch the other video. But the astrological eclipse is based on zodiac longitude. The astronomical eclipse is based on the, the moment when the sun and moon have the most overlap. Now, with a total eclipse, there's very little difference. Very little difference between astronomical and astrological eclipse. The times are almost identical. In a partial eclipse, and most eclipses are, you know, are, are not total, they're going to be partial eclipses, it makes a bigger difference. Well, because this is a total eclipse, it's going to make very little difference, but I'll show you what the difference is. Now, first of all, in showing you this difference, notice with the astrological eclipse in this table, I have the sun and moon positioned to the second. So they're both at 28 degrees, 50 minutes, and 8 seconds of Leo, which makes sense because this is an astrological eclipse when the sun and moon are exactly to the second conjunct. So there it is. And it's right at 1018. It doesn't put the zero seconds because it was 10 hours, 18 minutes, and zero seconds. Now I'm going to change it to the astronomical eclipse and it's only going to change the time, I think if I remember right, it's only like two seconds of time and the moon moves by one second. So with the total hips it makes almost no difference. But there is a slight difference. Very, very slight. Again, remember if this was a partial eclipse, it could be make a difference of many, you know, several minutes of time and it's more important. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, go to new. I'm going to view or edit my chart data go back to my lunations and eclipses selection and change the calculation method. I'll click on this and I'll change it from astrological to astronomical. Click OK. It says it saved it. Good. Click OK. Click done. And now when we look at this eclipse, it's showing that this is the astronomical eclipse I still have parallax corrected because I didn't change that. And it occurs at 10, 17, 58, only two seconds of time earlier. And look where the moon moved. It's moved one second, so it's not perfectly conjunct the sun. And this is the moment when the sun and moon have the most overlap, where, where the it's, the moon is perfectly covering the sun. It was actually two seconds of time earlier. Well, two seconds of time is fairly trivial, but like I said, if it was a partial eclipse, it would make a bigger difference. Um, you see, you'll see a bigger difference between the astronomical and the astrological eclipse. So that's it, my friends. I wanted to show that to you, that um, if you're running your astrology software and, you're, and you want to see the chart uh, for the eclipse, and you're planning to view the eclipse, because a lot of people in the United States are going to be traveling to, to watch the eclipse, why you're getting a different time. So I hope that makes it clear. Also, I want to mention, if you use the Kepler or the Sirius software, you may be saying, wow, this is cool. He's got this nice little table with the sun and moon to the second. Put in this chart wheel style. Do I have this chart wheel style? Well, we don't, we don't have a default wheel style that looks exactly like this, but it's extremely easy to make a table like this using the page designer. And I have a video on advanced customizing of the wheel and using Page Designer. And I'm going to make a video uh, just on customizing tables. I'll make a short video on that and I'll provide a link to that as well at the end of this video. So that uh, you can see how you can do these things. You can see how it's very handy, for example, in teaching when I'm giving this particular presentation. I don't have to jump around somewhere else and I've got a nice little table along with a nice big beautiful wheel. So it's handy to, to have that freedom to customize your wheels and, and just, you know, make them look good and have the information that you want to provide. Okay, so that's it my friends. That's why with the default settings of your astrology software, you will not come up with the time. Um, of the uh, of when to view the eclipse and the primary reason with the with these total eclipses like the one on August 21st 2017 is because of parallax in astrology the normal thing that's done the typical thing astrology uses is they do not use parallax corrected positions and you have to in order to get the accurate time of when you will see that eclipse and there are some astrologers that do use parallax corrected positions 
Okay, my friends, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.